All right, Paul, so we just kind of quickly saw some of the things in our solar system, but I think we really have the big question, where did it all come from? Okay, so let's try and come up with some theories. We've got okay. to produce a whopping great sun in the middle. And a with few... Yep, with lots of hydrogen and makes up pretty much everything of the solar system. And then a small number of little fluffy things around the side, mostly Jupiter and if you look really hard, some rocks. <laughs> okay, so we need a big fluffy thing in the middle, a Jupiter and a bunch of other meaningless things. That's Got it. That's right. So, okay, I've got to come up with four possible theories, okay. all of which were theories that people seriously believed at some point in right. the last few hundred years. So theory number one, which actually, spoiler alert, will turn out to be the correct one, is, well, what are we going to form things out of? We know that the Big Bang basically yep. produced gas. That's right. Hydrogen and helium and nothing else. That's right. And we talk about this at great length in the cosmology course. And this formed galaxies and the first stars, which we talk about at great length in the stars course. And they produced some heavy elements, i.e. anything other than hydrogen and helium. That's right. The astronomer. astronomer's periodic table, anything beyond helium is a metal. Again, see a the stars element, course. Yes. That's right. Um, so what you'll end up with is what are called giant molecular clouds, like this gorgeous one, Orion. Uh, and this has got mostly hydrogen and helium, but very small, less than 1% of oxygen, carbon, nitrogen, and other things like that. Yep. And we've got to turn this into a solar system. That's right. Now we do know, again, as we talked about in the stars, how this does become a star. But now the question is, how does it form all of the rest of that stuff that comes with it? Yeah. But this is the only thing that can feasibly turn into a solar system. I mean, where else are you going to get the mass from? Short of God said, <laughs> bing, let it appear. Uh, but this is it's got the right elements, yep. plus a lot more hydrogen and helium. Yep. So, so theory number one is basically one of these somehow collapses to form the sun and all the planets at the same time. So as we saw in the stars course, we saw the process of how these molecular clouds collapse down into a star. But we're saying now at the same time, the planets come along for the ride and are formed in the same way? Yeah, the same way at the same time. So that'd be okay. theory number one, that somehow you turn this into yep. the whole shebang of the solar system at one time. Okay. Theory number two is maybe you form the sun and the planets somewhere different from each other. So maybe we could form the sun from a giant molecular cloud like we talked about yep. in the stars course. And maybe you form planets from a different giant molecular cloud or somewhere else. So that they don't have to necessarily be from the same stuff at the same time. Yes, yeah, so it could be coming from a different place. It could be okay. a small giant molecular cloud forms Jupiter and a okay. big one forms the Sun, or a okay. yep. really small one forms Earth or something like this. Okay. And then somehow you've got all these planets and stars wandering around and they pair up somehow. Okay, so they form differently and at some point from undetermined time come together. Okay, yeah. All right. um, theory number three would be that the Sun has a big explosion and squirts some stuff out that turns into planets. Okay, so... We, we know the sun has big explosions. <laughs> That's true. We talk about this once again at great length in yes. the stars course. Uh, uh, and it happens all the time, so it is... And we do know that the sun is mostly hydrogen and helium, but it does have a little bit of this other stuff. So I guess, again, conceivably, it could give out things that look like Jupiter, but also things that look like Earth. Yeah, I mean, the explosions that are going on at the sun all the time are far, far, far too small. Yep. They don't produce enough material to form even the smallest of planets. But maybe at some point in the past, the sun was more violent and okay. flung more stuff out. It would have fired gas out, but maybe this gas somehow coalesced and formed a okay. uh, planet. I mean, who knows? Who knows, okay. But third option is it was birthed essentially from the sun. Yes, yeah, so we formed the sun and the sun sat there and then it bleh, <laughs> okay. Planets. All right, so we are planets are sun fur balls. All right, okay. I got it. And the fourth theory uh, is that um, we had the sun just sitting there, and at some point in the past, another star came close. Like okay. Really close. Okay. At the moment, the nearest other stars are you know, four light years away, but uh, most in, in the next 10 million years, we'll have others coming within a light year. That's still a long way out. Here, yep. here we need them to be within far less than a light year. So really we really have to be in, I guess, the scale of the solar system, right? In, in fact, much smaller than that. They have to be well inside of Mercury's orbit to make this happen. Okay. But the idea would be that another sun would come past and its gravity would distort our sun. Yep. And presumably it would be distorted by the gravity of our sun. And so it'll maybe pull some stuff out of the sun and pull some stuff out of it. And this, 
and then it flies off away into space again and all the stuff that's pulled out remains in some sort of orbit and then maybe coalesces to form planets. So kind of like the stuff being ejected from the sun, but something else pulls it and then is able to mix with some other ingredients, essentially. Yes, yeah, so instead of the sun doing it all by itself, bleh, it'd be like you drag <laughs> things out of me. Okay, all right. <laughs> the sun is being mugged by a passing star. <laughs> yeah, all right, and, all right. Um, some, some fraction of its gas. Bear in mind, of course, the planets are far less than one in the thousands of the sun. It's not lost very much. Of its That's mass. right. So... These are our four theories, okay. and in the next video, we'll start going through and trying to figure out which of them actually fits the data. Sounds good. <laughs>